I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Good morning. My name is jean louise Jacquery, and on behalf of our Pastor Paul Newman and CLT, we would like to warmly welcome you to this morning service. What a blessed assurance and hope you have in God who is with us day and night. Let's come together in prayer with Don God, followed the worship team bringing a song to us. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we bless you and we praise you for the grace that you have brought into our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you willingly gave yourself that we might be saved from our sins by the power of your death and resurrection. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come and you live within us. And we pray that in your grace you will continue to draw us to yourself, that we might become more and more like Jesus. I pray that you would forgive us today for all the things that we've done that did not reflect your glory. We pray that you would forgive us that we have not been as attentive to you as we could have been during the last week. And we would ask that you would walk with us and encourage us by the power of your grace to be more and more like you. We thank you that as we come together today to worship you, to hear your word to us, and to understand more of you, that you would equip us for the works that you're calling us to do in our community, the way that you're calling us to live in our daily lives, so that the power of your love might be seen in us. We thank you and bless you for all that you've done for us, and we come to you now with grateful hearts in anticipation of the goodness and the grace that we will receive through your loving kindness. We bless you, Lord God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Jesus said that he would be with us always. And it hasn't been different at this very challenging and difficult time we've been through during this pandemic. Now we are going to join Susanna and Brian Woodle in an intercession time, followed by a Bible reading by Juliana Jacquery. And after that, we are going to hear the word that God has uh, provided for us, prepared for us with Sarah Chambers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it saddens our hearts to see the great suffering of your beloved children in the world. We bring to mind all those in our area who find themselves in a hard place at this time. There are for many reasons, especially in this pandemic uncertainty. We especially pray for those who suffer physically with illness or mentally with depression or anxiety. Lord, come breathe on these people by your Holy Spirit and bring great love, hope and joy through us, your church. Help us to minister to others in the strength of your Spirit and to work in unity together. May we shine your glorious light into the darkness and remain steadfast and true to you. Lord, it disturbs us when we see the world leaders embracing division instead of unity, pursuing wealth and personal goals instead of justice, concealing lies and speaking out the truth. We lift all those in significant leadership to you. Come, guide their thoughts, cover their actions and renew their minds. Protect them from the influence of the realms of darkness and sweep away any corruption. We pray that you would lay out new paths of righteousness in troubled nations and lands. Father, it is disturbing to see the differences between the rich and the poor widening. We lift all those in poverty to you. Come, bring miracles of provision, healing and restoration. Speak into our lives so that we might play a part in this changing world. And we ask this all in your wonderful name. Amen. Lord, we pray for all young people who have received their exam results and who are about to receive them. Give them peace to know that you love them and that you know their future, no matter what their grades are. Give wisdom to all the students who got caught up in the confusion of the A-level results, who might have lost a place at university. You know their future. We also pray for all pupils and teachers to return to school, for clear guidance when it comes to year group bubbles and for teachers who will go between these bubbles. There is a lot of anxiety, Lord. Please be with everybody who has to make decisions, especially head teachers. Lord, we pray for Esther and her family. We pray that her health will improve and she will be kept free from infection. We also pray for Nathan, Elena and Ian. You know all their worries and anxieties. Please hold them in your hand. We pray for Maureen Stafford. We give thanks for her recent operation and pray that she will fully recover. We pray and give thanks for the parish nurses who are doing such an important job. Please send your Holy Spirit that they will feel well equipped to do their work. We pray for everybody in our church family who doesn't want to be named, but needs your help, Lord. You know who they are and what they need. Lord, we pray for Paul and Jill and for Reverend John Clayden, who are soon to be retired. Be with them in their new adventures and guide them so they will feel safe in your hands. Lord, we pray for all the missionaries at Guinea II Hospital in Chad. Keep them safe and send your Holy Spirit to give them strength. Lord, there are so many terrible things happening in the world. We especially think of the Lebanon, Belarus, America and of countless refugees crossing over from France, risking their lives to have a chance of a better life. We especially think of the 16-year-old Sudanese boy who drowned in the English Channel after his makeshift boat capsized while trying to reach the UK. 
We cannot imagine the sadness and despair his family and friends must feel. Melt our hearts, Lord, and let us be willing to share the riches we have. We all this ask this in Jesus' name. And now for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding round him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats on shore, left everything, and followed him. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to him and to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Hello there. Today, I want to take you to the seaside with me. Well, not literally, though I did originally think of trying to preach on Whitley Bay Beach, but it was a bit too noisy and wet. However, I want to take you to the seashore, out where the water meets the land, where the surging waves crash onto the sand, where the sea creatures hide in the rock pools, and where the air smells like Ooh, seaweed and fresh air and salt spray. Today, Sarah shares small thoughts from the seashore. Go on. Pause this video and you try and say that three times fast. She shares small thoughts from the seashore. Did you manage it? You didn't say she shares, she smells short shorts or anything like that. No. Okay. During COVID, during the lockdown, the beach at Whitley Bay became a place for exercise and a place for people to express their monument building skills. People started creating pebble stacks. The newspapers like the Chronicle showed photographs and people went down to have a look at these structures. Whatever the reason that people had for building, it certainly turned heads. It caught the imagination. The beach has that effect on people. It's a place where rough and jagged rocks become pebbles on the seashore, where discarded glass, shards, 
snippets of glass bottles become sea glass that people actually like wearing as jewellery. Things change. What was wasted one day becomes something that's beautiful. A day to remember, an item to remember. That's exactly what happened the day that Jesus visited Gennesaret. We'd know it as the Sea of Galilee. I know that the Sea of Galilee is in fact the lowest freshwater lake in the world. However, out of tradition, we do call it a sea. Jesus had a crowd around him and that was the normal situation for him. He was a good teacher and people wanted to hear what he had to say. Jesus took the holy things, the things that were normally spoken in the temple, and he took them to ordinary people to hear. He was giving hope in the middle of their hopelessness, healing to the sick and bringing comfort. Comfort in times where they truly needed it. Jesus saw two boats on the seashore and he got into one of them. He asked Simon Peter to go a little way out so that he could teach the crowd. Well, once he was finished teaching, he then asked them to go a little bit deeper out and put their nets down. Just take a moment and imagine if you were Peter that day would you have said yes? Suppose Peter had said, look, I'm busy cleaning my nets right now and I can't help you because, well, I'm going to be going out fishing again tonight. Why don't you ask that other bloke just, just down the beach? I've already been fishing today. It would be a waste of time to go out again. If Peter had said anything other than yes, he'd have missed an incredible experience, the most incredible. Because of Peter's obedience, Jesus arranged a miracle that he'd never forget. But that's the outcome of obedience, of saying yes, it brings blessings. Jesus' simple requests often serve as stepping stones in the life in our life's most wonderful blessings simon peter illustrates that what can happen when you say yes to god that request to go deeper into the water to let down our nets is something that jesus asks for each of us but for peter it was a real crunch time he may have felt tempted to decline after all, he was the seasoned fisherman and Jesus was just a carpenter from Nazareth. Master, we worked hard all night, he said, and we've caught nothing but I will do as you say and let down the nets. Peter's reply demonstrates the beginning of a lifetime of faith in God. That soon-to-be disciple chose to obey Jesus and to leave the consequences to him. So can you. But notice what happened as the result of Peter's obedience. Jesus did something. Jesus demonstrated his own power. His sovereignty. He was able to control the situation where Peter couldn't have controlled it. He had the power to bring in that catch and he did so. Peter and his partners had started the day off thinking that their efforts had yielded nothing, but they ended it in complete amazement because they pulled not just one boat of fish, but two boats of fish. And they were overflowing and they were nearly sinking because of it. Saying yes didn't just change one fisherman's life, but the lives of the entire group. So why is obedience critical? 
God loves to do things and we say yes. Ask yourself, <clears throat> just today, ask yourself, has God been challenging me to do something seemingly unimportant that I've not yet made an effort to try and accomplish? Have you been trying to rationalise some of those things? Well, it's just too difficult to do. I don't really want to do it. Uh, I'll have to pray about this first. Imagine if Abraham, back in Genesis, had said no to God when he was told to go to the promised land. No, I'll just stay in her. It's a lot safer and uh, I'll be okay. He wouldn't have experienced God's blessing. If Noah had said, no, the weather's far too nice and I don't want to build a boat today. He would never have experienced God's blessing. Or if Moses had said, no, I don't want to go to Pharaoh and save the people out of Egypt. Because people said yes, blessings came. Not just blessings, but abundant blessings were showered. And Jesus is waiting for you to say yes. And he wants to share those blessings. He's waiting for your absolute surrender to him, your obedience in his way, in his word, in his will. Next, our obedience always brings benefits to others as well. Think of how many people were blessed on the day that Peter said yes. Not only could the crowd see the Lord and he, his lesson, but Jesus himself was benefited. He was able to sit, sit comfortably on the boat while he spoke to them. Then, of course, Peter and his friends made a very big profit on that day. They took in two vessels full of fish, so many that the boats nearly sank. It's so important that we take that opportunity to witness the supernatural provision that God can bring to each one of us. Take that time, say yes, and hear what God wants to give to you. Lastly, when we obey, we'll never be dis disappointed. Peter no doubt assumed that Jesus' fishing instructions would just be a waste of time. But when he complied with the Lord's simple request, Jesus brought about a miracle that gripped that disciple with amazement. He turned an empty boat into a full one. He turned an unbeliever into a believer. He turned a sinful man into being somebody who was cleansed, who recognised, who knew what he'd done. Perhaps you've hesitated in saying yes to God because you fear in those consequences of your decision. Don't hesitate. Jesus will deal with the consequences along with you. Moses hesitated. Moses in Exodus 4 verses 1 to 14, sorry, 1 to 4 said, then Moses answered, what if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? For they may say, the Lord has not appeared to you. And the Lord said to him, what's in your hand? And he said, a staff. And then he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. But the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand and grasp it by its tail. So he stretched out his hand and he caught it and it became a staff in his hand. God often calls us to do something just to see if we will trust him enough to obey him. Even when it doesn't make sense to us, he asks for us to say yes. The lesson you could call this doesn't it doesn't need our abilities but he does want 
our availability. He doesn't need our abilities. He wants our availabilities. God said to Moses, what's in your hand? Moses had a staff, a rod, a cane, you might say. And God told him to throw it on the ground. And when Moses did, it turned into a snake. God used Moses and used that staff, didn't he? Because of the obedience that Moses had. With the rod, Moses struck the Nile River and turned it into blood. He brought a plague of frogs. He brought gnats out of a dust storm. There was fire and thunder and hail when he stretched it out. He brought a plague of locusts. He divided the Red Sea. He struck a rock and got water from it. And when he held it in his hands on high, the warriors prevailed in battle. And to think that Moses just called it a staff. So what do you have in your hand? What is it that you have? What did Andrew have in his hands when he'd been searching for food amongst the crowd and a young boy came with his packed lunch? He says, I've got some fish and a few loaves of bread. Come here, said Jesus. I can do something with that for 5,000 people. Here at the seashore, Jesus gave Peter a challenge. From now on, you will fish for men. Yes, Peter was impulsive. Peter could speak before he really thought. Peter worked well in a team. He inspired people to do the same. He was strong. Well, these were the things that were in his hands, but it wasn't his abilities that mattered. It was his willingness to say yes. From saying yes, Peter saw his life with new eyes and some of it he didn't like. But Jesus would deal with that. He saw where he needed to be and who needed to be with him and his life changed. This is really the call of Peter. Peter, the rock, or I like to think of him as the pebble on the seashore. He became a building block on which the church was started, all because he said yes to the one who met him in his need. Will you say yes? I want to sing a song for you as I come to the end of this. And it's a song by Sheila Hamill. And it's a song that I recorded quite some time ago. It's called, I Offer You Today, Lord. I offer you today, Lord, as I turn to you to pray, Lord, as I fail and as I stray, Lord, I offer you today. I offer you my thoughts, Lord, all my crosses and my knots, Lord, when I'm down and out of sorts, Lord, I offer you my thoughts, I offer you my helplessness, I know you'll turn it into bravery. I offer you my hopelessness. That's what you get from such as me. I offer you my heart, Lord. Won't you let me play a part, Lord? I know it's just a start, Lord. I offer you my heart. When you make another dawn for me And I see another sunrise there All my fears and insecurities Are as nothing now I'm in your care I offer you my heart, Lord 
won't you let me play a part, Lord? I know it's just a start, Lord. I offer you my heart. Lord, I pray that this blesses you today. Amen.
to an end of our service. Our prayer is that God has blessed you and equipped you for the coming week. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God give you his peace in your going out and your coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until we come to stand before Jesus in that day where there is no sunset, no dawn.